Climate models are the only tools that we can use to uh, do climate predictions. We cannot just take the observations in the last years or last decades and somehow extrapolate based on the observations what will happen uh, in the next years and decades. They are also the only tools to fill the gaps in observations, uh, let's say in the last century, or for example going to the deep past, uh, let's say uh, in between the ice ages or even uh, in time when the dinosaurs ruled the earth. We need to rely on climate models uh, to predict future and to understand the processes that are important for uh, next decades. Even if we wouldn't rely one-to-one -one that the climate models are uh, making perfect results uh, for everything, we need to know the limitations, but also we need to learn from them so that we know about the couplings, interactions and feedbacks that are ongoing in the real world uh, climate system. We are of course, uh, when we are developing climate models, we are continuously evaluating them against the observations that we have available. And we see that uh, single models perform very well against observations, but uh, even more so when we take several models, even tens of models as they do in IPCC assessments, the model medians are performing very well against the observations. We have uncertain parameters in climate models. We know that we have uh, some processes involved and we have already implemented into the climate model, but we still see that there are some parameters that we really cannot constrain based on observations or theory well enough. So we, for example, then have parameters that we think that might be the best ones, but we also know that there is still uh, room for improvement. We are maybe also missing processes. Of course, at this point we know that we have the major processes already in the models. But there still might be some uh, smaller details missing completely that we know that we cannot include in the models yet if we don't have enough observations or theoretical background to include them at this point. We, one uncertainty also is uh, uh, coming from the model resolution. Now, currently, the model resolution is uh, tens of kilometers or even hundreds of kilometers in spatial scale. And we know that we cannot, for example, resolve clouds because of this uh, large scale. So even with the uh, 50 kilometer typical climate model grid box, uh, we cannot solve uh, the clouds because they have much more finer scale details. So this is one of the uncertainties still remaining in the climate models and of course hope that uh, when we have uh, more computational capacity we can increase the uh, resolution even more. We know that there are processes and parameters that are based on a very limited amount of uh, observations and we know that there is room to improve the processes themselves. So there will be a continuous update of these models against new observations. Maybe we haven't yet used all the observations to uh, a maximum extent possible. So, so this will happen uh, all the time in the community that is developing the climate models. We also know that the computational capacity uh, is increasing all the time. Now all the modeling communities have processes waiting uh, that uh, could use this increased computational capacities. So they can, for example, make the processes more explicit. They can simulate uh, several processes better than before. And of course, this computational capacity, it will partly go to the increasing resolution. So getting, for example, from 50 kilometers to 10 kilometers or even higher uh, resolutions. And this will make the uh, climate predictions 
uh, give even more useful information as currently. There is also a possibility that uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning will help developing the models get to the next level. Uh, we can, for example, if we have uncertain processes that we cannot um, predict and model explicitly with other models, we can perhaps then include observations, machine learning uh, into modules uh, that will give us at least statistically uh, correct information and be, be included into the climate models. Initially, when seeing results, for example, from a climate model, the initial results are uh, joy that everything is working. There is actually results coming out and the development that has been maybe taking several years, maybe even let's say five years, uh, is finally uh, getting uh, fruitful results in terms of, uh, let's say, new climate scenarios or, for example, simulating the uh, recent decades in a way that is actually matching with the observations. So after the initial reactions, uh, we start putting the results into the context of uh, earlier results, earlier uh, assessments, for example, done by IPCC. And then when you start putting it in the larger context, then you, you start to think about the consequences. And actually, then when you are drawing, for example, a line that shows a future scenario, uh, you might even start thinking about actual people living in one of those scenarios, whichever will be then our actual future. So I would say that the feelings uh, are quite different uh, initially when looking at the results and then when actually putting them into the real world context.